years in the making. A sellout crowd, 12 drivers ready to start. The superstar racing experience is green. Already you're seeing cars down below the apron there. I think you're going to see that play into the race all night long, every race. That definitely helps de-wedge the car and get it to turn. It's also a more, more racing room. Bobby Labonte in the teal car on the outside trying to hang with Greg Biffle. Biffle will lead the very first lap in the gold car. And by the way, Ray Everham now, the series founder, will exhale because these guys have never been side by side into the corner and they all came back the first lap intact. So there is first and second. It is Biffle Labonte, then Ernie Francis Jr. running third. A young driver that's a rising star out of the road racing business. Elio Castroneves settles in line fourth in the car with the big red X. There's Elio. Talk about being out of your comfort zone. <laughs> no kidding. So I've mentioned Ernie Francis Jr. in the two, running in third. Young driver from a road racing background, Matt has more. And racing like a veteran with that mentality during practice, he noticed that his brake temperatures were a little bit too warm compared to Tony Stewart's. So in his mindset, he knows he's got to back up a little earlier going into the corner to make his brakes last longer throughout the night. It's the total package right here on the short tracks, A.B. Yeah, and, and Ernie, only 23 years old. Why is he in the superstar racing experience? Well, he's age 23. He's won seven championships in the Trans Am Road Racing Series for, for muscle cars. There's Tony Kanaan beginning to come under some pressure from Tony Stewart behind while he tries to find a way around. Paul Tracy, Tracy washes out. And here comes Kanan to the inside. Stewart right there. Michael Waltrip behind Stewart in the blue car. This is always the interesting thing when you're trying to pass a car. You got to be careful of what's behind you. Uh -huh. Because when you lose momentum, the car behind you gets a run. So as Tony was trying to get a run on PT, you could see he lost a little momentum out of turn two, and then Smoke was right there to, uh, to, to perhaps make a move. So top left of your screen, you see the countdown clock going on. This a timed heat, 15 minutes, and when the leader crosses the start-finish line, the first time after that hits zero, the leader gets the white flag, and there'll be one lap left to go in the heat. Uh, but Bobby Albani is he's putting the pressure on. I mean, he is faster. So it's just difficult to pass. So, you know, here, here I go again with that storyline. Are we going to start to see people that are, are going to do things that, again, give us something to talk about out here and are going to keep it fun and playful? Or are we, uh, are we going, well, maybe we will. Or uh, are people going to keep their cars clean for now? That is called shutting the door. Tony Stewart tried to pass Tony Kanaan in the pink car. Stewart had to get off the gas. Michael Waltrip in the blue car tried to take advantage. And Stewart said, no, you're not coming through. I'm sorry. Come on, here's Kobe getting a spot on Michael Waltrip. So put the local guy up to eighth place. Marco Andretti in the uh, black-winged car. And Bill Elliott in the purple machine. Racing back for 10th and 11th place. Elliott looking for a little racing room that may not be there. Oop, got a spin, turn number two. Paul Tracy tried to shut the door. And caution flag will wave. Michael Waltrip was not going to have the door shut on him again. And did Marco Andretti collide there with Tracy in the smoke screen? <laughs> I think he was pushing Marco out of the way. <laughs> well, our here's first a, yellow. Here's a look at what happened. to say that PT got spun. Michael spun him. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff we were waiting to see, yep. right? We were looking, yep. we were waiting to see if people were going to get rough and, you know, he well. did not have the pass done, Waltrip, and then PT just came down and, you know, didn't leave him any room. So they both could have probably avoid that, but it's more fun if you don't sometimes. One of the tricks to this for these drivers, if you're used to watching NASCAR or IndyCar, they have a spotter. High on the track somewhere, relaying things like somebody's to your inside on the radio. Don't have that here. It's up to you and your rear view mirror to avoid situations like that. There are some drivers here that don't even remember what it's like to drive without a spotter. So let's see if they can get through one and two one more time. If not, that's okay. <laughs> I 
think we're going to see the cars continue to get more and more racy all night as these drivers get used to, to racing them, to uh, making a couple changes before the feature. I, I think that I think you're going to see people finding out how to test the limits more and more, not only with the car itself, but with each other. <laughs> yep. How about your Indy 500 winner, Elio Castroneves, with that outside pass on Ernie Francis for third place. So the red number three up to that uh, podium position. Now, as I look back the field, I see smoke there. It's three wide coming out of turn two. It looked like he has Elliott and maybe Colby that was nearby. Colby's ahead of him, but Elliott was underneath him. That was that was getting pretty racy there. Now oh. you're looking at, they're, they're coming right down to the end. There's, this is the last lap. You're looking at guys at the very back. They're thinking to themselves probably, if I lose this spot, this is one more spot to start early, further up in the next race. But it looks like Biffle has control of this race. He's uh, He's got a lot of short track experience, and it's showing here tonight as he comes across the line for the win. I don't know, one lap to flag. go. Yeah, the, the white flag waves okay. when they come after the clock expires. So now the final lap. We're all learning together. Yeah, it's a, it's a new final lap. Bobby the body chasing Greg Biffle as he has right from the start of this one with Castro Neves in third. And the first checkered flag of the Camping World SRX series will belong to Greg Biffle. Biffle with 19 wins in his NASCAR Cup career, none on a short track. Stand by, we'll have more as the night goes on. Here they come, Paul Tracy with that repaired car and Willie T. Ribs on the front row, green flag. We're racing again at Stafford. Oh, they're gonna mix it up here. Look at Waltrip go. Michael Waltrip looking to get to the front in a hurry in that blue car. Waltrip, the new leader. A little bit of a slide job, a little bit of a dive bomb or a slide job. I know the drivers were talking about how it's really tight in the center of the corner. Is Willie T. Ribs followed by Tony Stewart and Bill Elliott. Here's that challenge and pass for the lead. So you can see how he set him up. He was a little bit wide in the middle of three and four and then was able to get the car turned and get on the power probably full throttle sooner, obviously, than PT did. And, and he got the run down the front straight away and got by him. A little oh. contact. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, you back that corner up a little bit earlier than that, and you just kind of don't slow down as much, and that's called taking someone out. So <laughs> you can see that people are still not doing that, but yep. that was right there for the taking. They're your biggest movers since the start of this second heat. Stewart and Kobe looking most interesting to me as they run in this uh, line right now. There are a hundred of these local Saturday night racetracks and more scattered across America and a thousand guys like Doug Kobe looking to have a shot to race against their heroes. Doug C said he feels the responsibility to represent them all well here tonight and he's had his hands full out there. That's Bill Elliott getting into him. Bill remembers how to race. Yes he does. All right, let's see what happened. Oh, he didn't even get any help. Look at the look at the brake uh, blow on the front brakes. And in the aftermath, with cars stacking up behind, that's Greg Biffle and Elio Castroneves, who had contact. Look at the front look at the front rotor, the left front rotor. I mean, he had those brakes glow in red, trying to get it stopped. These things don't want to turn anyway. You also don't know how hard he's been leaning on that right rear tire. And, you know, I mean, he had a lot of pressure for a long time. And so we're going to get a pick, get a view here from Elio. Ooh. That's going to leave a mark. More bodywork damage, something they're prepared for. I oh mean, boy. let's see how this goes. Paul Tracy to the outside of Michael Waltrip to turn one. looks great. Tony Stewart getting bumped and bang. There's Bill Elliott in the purple car inside of Stewart in the orange machine. A little nudge up the racetrack in turn four. 
Kobe leaning on PT. He was bumping him all the way through three and four. Got him just out of shape enough to be able to get by down the front straight into one. So the local hero up to second place. Now Tony Stewart clears Bill Elliott. He'll go to work on Paul Tracy. Stewart in the orange car to turn three. Excuse me, coming through. <laughs> you might have been right about that first seat saving his tires. Here's Bill Elliott by Tracy to move up a spot. Now Doug Kobe all over Michael Waltrip for the race lead as we come down inside the final minute of heat number two. Oh, wow. You watched him just close on Waltrip in the, on the brakes into three. That kind of screams dive bomb to me. When you can see that you've got him on the braking, in the braking zone, it really makes you think, hmm, maybe I should just pull out just before the braking zone to the inside and make a move. He's got a run on the two-time Daytona 500 winner. Kobe to the outside, Waltrip to the inside. Fans come to their feet. This is for the lead. All you have to do is hang on to that right rear. When you get side by side in, in these cars, you just have to hang on to the corner. And I tell you what, when you get pinched down low, it is so much harder to turn. It is also so much harder to put the power down. So the, the, the higher, higher lane works. If there's enough grip, it wins. These fans are on their feet as their local hero takes the lead white flag. Two more corners for Michael Waltrip to try and get back by. Checkered flag and a big heat race win for local driver Doug Kobe. We saw some more wheel-to-wheel -wheel action out there. We saw a little bit more bumping. I think this is the start of a beautiful thing here for this 100-lap feature that we're going to have very shortly. The smile that must be on that guy's face. As you mentioned, there are thousands of guys who race on Saturday nights all across America every week. Doug Colby feels like he represents them all here. And listen to the roar.